Good morning students and other viewers. Uh, today I have with me uh, Dr. Pradeep Kumar. Dr. Pradeep Kumar has been uh, one of our consultants. He has uh, developed a course voluntary uh, action and in rural, in rural development which is a masters uh, a, an elective in the masters program MRD uh, MARD he has uh, a lot of experience in voluntary organizations we have him here today to speak on voluntary organizations I am Somya Kanti Palit. I belong to the Faculty of Rural Development. Uh, I hope today we will be able to give you some insights into how a volunteer organization functions. So we have taken up in the first session as well as in the second uh, voluntary administration administration in voluntary organizations uh, we would look into how a voluntary how to basically run a voluntary organization how the administration in a voluntary organization is uh, uh, different from running other organizations and uh, how to be essentially more effective as far as the objectives of voluntary organizations are concerned. So I would like to pose few questions to our speaker, guest speaker, uh, Dr. Pradeep Kumar. I would first pose him a very simple question. Uh, is what is I mean what do you understand by you know a voluntary organization how, how do you say a voluntary organization is different from other organizations and how is the administration of or rather administering a voluntary organization is different from administering any other organization be it a corporate sector or a government sector uh, well these questions may be very um, nebulous in the sense uh, much of administration there's could be a lot of similarities in running organizations of any kind but still there is some difference so he, he is here to tell us what are the similarities and how strikingly different administration in voluntary organizations is nicely sir thank you it's a very important question, sir, has raised uh, what's the difference from voluntary organization administration to other organization uh, like a government organization or non-profit, uh, that, that the profitable organization. Administration is the most uh, significant uh, part of any organization and uh, particularly in government organization, it is more emphasized. Uh, so for the concern of the voluntary organization, administration uh, uh, term is not, uh, uh, I think, uh, exactly encompass the whole activities to run an organization, voluntary organization, manage a voluntary organization and the whole functions. Uh, voluntary organization, administration, basically it uh, refers both administration as well as management. And sometimes uh, it, uh, there is a slightly difference between these two. 
if we see the what are the structure of a voluntary organizations administration uh, like uh, broadly we can see it in three levels uh, three levels that is the governing body highest apex body second level is the executive salaried staff or the managerial routine work uh, staff third is the volunteers the largest category in voluntary organization but uh, before we go to the uh, structure uh, i would like to try to uh, make distinction with some distinguishing features uh, which make distinction what are the differences of these organizational from government organization and profitable organization first and most important point is if hierarchy if you don't mind i would just uh, uh, before we go into the differences yes uh, i would request you to first tell us what are the similarities uh, between different organizations as far as administration is concerned yes. and then if we go for the differences then it would be much more striking. yeah 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 it's right uh, similarity in terms of each organization needs some proper i mean uh, differences division of labor each organization is run by some division of labor clear cut rules regulations and guidelines and some vision each organization has a fixed uh, vision and goal to achieve and uh, for that goal for that vision it executes the plans and uh, i mean design the structure to fulfill those visions goals and uh, these similar uh, target uh, all always exist in all three organization whether it is a government organization whether it is a non governmental or profitable organization and uh, with this similarity uh, i think uh, we can say that the, the uh, main, uh, main point of similarity is to execute the vision or goal to the uh, action and translate it into action need certain mechanism or design and this is the most important common point in all organizations uh, so i, I hope uh, the similar uh, component is this uh, if uh, we see the the other similar features uh, i think uh, this is the most important common uh, common yes, similar feature uh, uh, as uh -huh. far as for any organization it has to have a purpose and when you say for instance a corporate organization its purpose is to make profit it yes. has to make a product or a service which it has to sell in the market yes and ensure there's certain amount of return they invest and they get a return yes. so for which as dr pradeep has said there has to be a plan there has to be a target objective goal so they have to work accordingly to realize their goal similarly in a uh, government organization they also have uh, different government organizations are there they have certain each and every government organization has a certain goal it has to work towards that so all its resources be it men uh financial resources everything is geared towards realizing that goal similarly in voluntary organization also the main finances everything is geared to realize whatever its specific goal is now these are to reach these goals the basic there are a lot of things which come up common one is you got to have different cadres of people who have to work you have heads of organizations you have uh, the middle ranking people then you have below them who basically do the implementation work they could be planners there has to be a cell of planning cell which would fix up targets what to do how to do you know all that be it a corporate organization be it a government organization be it a voluntary organization they have to have if it's they are large enough they would have a planning cell within them well 
I think yeah. uh, similarities, very uh, we have touched upon similarities, there could be much more similarities, which if you, uh, if given the constraints of time, we need not go much into similarities. But what is more important is to know what the differences are. And how is a voluntary organization different from a profit-making organization or a government organization? Uh, well, from a profit-making organization, voluntary organization is strikingly different because it's, uh, it has one's objective is to make profit, the other is to ensure service. But it becomes very difficult to distinguish between a government organization and a voluntary organization. When both they both are basically non-profit making organizations, yet uh, their goals may be same to a, to a large extent. In many cases they are very much overlapping, yet they are different. And that is what we would like to hear from uh, Dr. Pradeep Kumar. What is how is uh, voluntary organizations different from other organizations and specifically as far as the administration of voluntary organization is concerned because this session we are uh, this and the following session we would be talking about more about administration only yeah so basically I have talking about the what are the distinguishing features uh, of voluntary uh, uh, organizations administration uh, with, uh, res uh, with respect to government organization uh, other organization uh, for um, my point of view there is uh, four major differences and uh, maybe differences uh, within us uh, in these points uh, first important point is the hierarchy whatever the hierarchy exists in the government organization it's not uh, more explicit in the voluntary organizations. Hierarchy is less explicit and whatever hierarchy exists in voluntary organization that is based more to uh, coordinate the things on the basis of division of labor rather than the power. Power is not much important in voluntary organization administration or authority rather just to manage the things and project or programs. Uh, so hierarchy, I think, the most important component, the uh, which distinguishes these two organizations. And second uh, important thing is collective decision making. Uh, we use, as we know by definition, voluntary organization is a organization whose membership is itself voluntarily emerge voluntarily and decision making process is also voluntarily and uh, so the collective participation is there and uh, there is not one man who takes all the decision rather than a group of people uh, called governing body and management board of management and different other uh, name we can say it but uh, these collective body decides each policies uh, there is no one man. However, also in the government organizations and in the profitable uh, institution, there is a body who takes decision in terms of po uh, in their policy. But uh, power is more, uh, uh, I mean, uh, concentrated in the one man, two man, and some uh, uh, apex board, apex person, hand decision making. But here. Uh, really the power is in the hands of group and that's why we can say it's a collective decision making. A third important uh, feature uh, with respect to administration is uh, unlike bureaucratic structure it is based on both formal and informal settings. The settings in voluntary organization is not completely formal like the voluntary uh, government organization and not completely informal like the profit making agencies uh, organizations so uh, we can say we can find it uh, both type of uh, organizational uh, structure merge in the voluntary organization there is no need that uh, everything should be passed by proper bureaucratic file process and procedure 
many things executed in the field without these processes and these processing may take later on. So the bureaucratic uh, structure is not so rigid uh, in the voluntary uh, uh, organization administration and both merges formal and informal uh, organizational settings are existing in these uh, voluntary organizations. Particularly if we see the uh, community based organization and grassroots organization where uh, peoples are not much aware of these uh, bureaucratic uh, uh, rules, regulations and formal settings. But they execute uh, their uh, programs, projects very efficiently, very effectively. And there are lots of success story in these uh, respect. In grassroots organizations, uh, we can uh, see that uh, water management from the Rajasthan Alwar district uh, is uh, led by Rajinder Singh and their colleagues, uh, Tarun Bharat Sangh. So, this is the most important thing. And lastly, but not uh, least uh, important, uh, the charismatic leadership. Uh, voluntary organization, uh, most of the voluntary organization, administration is basically uh, led by a charismatic leadership. Uh, maybe that leadership uh, drawn from outside society or may it emerge from the community itself. But the charismatic leadership, the most important component in its organizational settings and uh, administration. Uh, maybe that uh, is not uh, documented properly, but each organization has, particularly I am talking about the uh, successful organization, has some visionary leadership. And that visionary leadership uh, uh, develops its own group mechanism for their... Uh, call from Karnal. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Adam. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Yeah. Uh, thank you for this very informative program. Uh, we, uh, myself, Yad uh, Rajesh, at uh, this regional centre. Yes. We have a few. Uh, we have one basic uh, query regarding the topic which uh, uh, being discussed. Uh, we would like to know that in many of the uh, no, uh, voluntary organizations as well as NGOs, not only at the national level but also at the international level, we have a case of uh, role conflict. Yeah. The uh, roles uh, within the organization are not very well defined mm. and which ultimately leads to a kind of uh, tension within the organization. Uh. So how do the international and reputed national organizations control this kind of role conflict within themselves as part of their administrative mechanism. Okay, okay. We would like to know. We Thank will, you very much. Okay, we will address this. Uh, let me um, say a few words uh, yeah, yeah. on what Dr. Pradeep Kumar said. You see, and we had a call from Karnal about the role conflict uh, which he was talking about about international organizations as well as national organizations. I think when I speak, this whole issue get will get solved. Uh, you see, government organizations. We say that in the government organization there has been a very rigid hierarchy. There has been a rigid. The authority has been more rigid. Powers are concentrated at the top and they are delegated as we come down. The strict rules and regulations because in government organizations the main uh, problem is that in government organization most of the people who work there may not be there forever you know they they work they move out so there has to be an accountability as far as uh, the work is concerned the finances are concerned so therefore we have a lot of rules regulations and uh, since the resources belong to the government they have to have a rigid 
account of all that. Plus, uh, mm, the as far as accountability in terms of implementing the work uh, is concerned, that is also has to be taken into account. And because everything gets audited. Similarly, in voluntary organizations, also we have audit uh, auditing. But the leadership here is, as he said, is more or less charismatic in the sense that few people who feel, who are sensitive enough, who feel, who are, are those who can think ahead from the rest of the crowd, they get together and start taking up or working on issues which would be beneficial for the community. Now these people are people who have that kind of uh, confidence rather that they can get work done by people but mostly acting as role models. They stand up as role models for others to follow them. So once that is done, then much of the work is done because of volition. You don't have to police people. You don't have to uh, make, force others to work. People work because they like to work. A person is, uh, so for instance, there were a lot of people who would like to be associated with Gandhi because Gandhi as a personality was so great that anyone who would come close to him would like to do what he wanted. So the element of trust is assured. Whereas in government organizations, uh, basically people are, they come for jobs. And when it is just the interest is jobs, I don't say the government, or, uh, the people who are working in government organizations, they do not have their own motivation to work. They do have motivation to work, but primarily it is a job. People do it as a job. And uh, if the setup by any chance does not reciprocate to the motivation of the incumbent, then gradually the person would lose heart in his job. Then it would be merely doing a job and getting money. So then people would come and go, work may not get done. So that precisely because of that, they have formulated n number of rules to make sure that people work and the work gets done. But unfortunately, the rules don't make people work. What makes people work is the motivation. That is why we have these voluntary organizations. Why there was, what is the need for voluntary organizations? If the government organizations were so very perfect and they were doing things uh, what they were meant to do, then there was no need for the vol uh, voluntary organizations. Because, just because we do not have the kind of leadership which a voluntary organization can have, we need voluntary organizations. Because the head of the voluntary, uh, of a government organization, be it a university, be it a uh, the railways, be it uh, the hospital, whatever, is going to move out after a certain span of time, the tenured post. And may, it may by chance, you know, you may have a very good leader at, uh, at one point of my time, but the next leader may not be so very good. So once the leader is not good, then the entire organization goes 
for a slumber. I mean, it doesn't work at all. So that is why we find voluntary organizations are more effective. Only when not all voluntary organizations are effective, but voluntary organizations who have the real leaders in them, they become effective. Now, when such leaders are there, then the question of hierarchy is not to maintain the hierarchy. Hierarchy is uh, required just to, uh, you know, uh, people with substantial experience, people with substantial insight, maturity, they would be placed at a higher, higher position. So that people, they are looked up to. You just can't be, uh, just because of a qualification or uh, um, just because you've got you have been selected in an exam or whatever you are placed at a higher position but you do, may not be knowing your work at all so then the hierarchy is meaningless so hierarchy is useful when only you have people at the top who are substantially more matured than the people at the bottom. So the person who is at the top could, because of his experience, even sitting far off from the place where things are getting implemented, could solve a problem. By mere a phone call from the field to the person will, uh, you know, the person would get the solution from him because he has spent years and years in the field and he knows what all the problems, what the problems uh, can be. So when the youngsters face the problems for the first time and get disturbed how to solve it, they get in touch with that person and that person solves it in no time. So obviously, this person has to be at the central place where a lot of people can have access to him. So his position automatically goes up in the hierarchy, isn't it? Yes, uh, very nicely you have explained the role <laughs> conflict. Uh, I have yet to come uh, the role uh, conflict. Uh, and. What is role conflict? I mean, uh, let me finish off with the other uh, aspects what he has uh, done. Well, the collective decision making. Uh, unlike bureaucratic setup, formal and informal, a marriage between formal and informal. Well, you see, all these things could be there in the government organizations. In the government organizations, the problem is this. When you have a very competent leader uh, at the top, when he decides, if it, is into, if it gets into his head that he has, be, he has made it to the IS, so he is the only knowledgeable person, the rest of the knowledge what the people have are useless. So whatever, he is the best person to judge then no doubt he might be a brilliant person but after all he is an individual an individual can have at the most one of a perspective so there, there could be many other aspects of which he may not be having uh, he may not may not have paid attention to so if we opens up his mind, if he lets others' views into consideration, then the decision he can take would be perhaps much better than what he feels he can do without others' help. 
so an intelligent person a person who is really sound administrator would always try to involve or uh, take into consideration the views of lot many people before coming to a decision but unfortunately you can say ego you can say arrogance you can say many other things which comes into the play of human uh, psyche that doesn't permit a person to um, open up to others even admit one's own mistakes or to cons to uh, recognize uh the idea of a subordinate subordinate or appreciate the idea of a subordinate uh that kind of humility if a person does not have then the person cannot be a very good leader whereas in voluntary organizations when you say a charismatic leader when you talk about charismatic leaders the charismatic leader first of all thinks that the person who is uh for whom i am going to do it for first i would consider his or her views what he wants what actually he would love to be it's not that what i want him to be so if you place the beneficiary or the person whom you are doing for whom you are trying to do something or the people associated with him his family if you take their views into consideration if you give them more importance than yourself then obviously you would get more closer to the reality you would take their rationality into consideration than your rationality you would give more importance to their rationality than to your rationality you would if you consider them to be intelligent person you should consider them to be if not more at least uh the intelligence level it could be that that particular person may not be intelligent but the group cannot be more uh less intelligent so if that kind of approach is there obviously you would go for collective views and when you go for collective views so the the error becomes less after all it is what the people wanted you did for them you can argue you can disagree you can there could be a lot of things to before you come down to a decision but at least you should listen to them this is does not happen with the so called bureaucrats it's not that there aren't bureaucrats who are really fantastic i mean they are as good as charismatic leaders but for that the you know the uh, the the arrogance the ego has to be shunned you know it has to be kept at the bottom and uh, uh, then then only the you know a uh, bureaucratic leader can be a charismatic leader he has to open up to people well when this 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 kind of opening up takes place then it has to be it cannot be so very rigid formal style as a government organization functions well there has to be a certain amount of rules to get things done. yeah yeah yes yes hyderabad yes ahmedabad ahmedabad ah uh, speak why don't you speak out the question hello hello yes hello yes 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 ha uh. yeah hello yes yes 
Yeah, we could get a, get a little bit of commercialization in NGOs. She was she was talking. I don't know what the full question is, but yet. So I, I'll also hit. A, I'll talk about commercialization in NGOs. Uh, obviously, in such cases, you cannot be so very rigid. Yeah. Online. Question is coming on online. Yeah. If you could get the questions, please. Yes, we are trying. Hmm. Anyway, uh, in such cases, you can't be so rigid. So you got to be very informal in while speaking to ordinary people. I mean, there has to be a fine marriage between the formality and informality. So collective decision, leadership becoming charismatic, formality along with informality, all these things happens when there is good leadership. And precisely because of this lack of good leadership, we needed voluntary organizations. I just pick up the last question first, then go for the earlier question of role conflict. Some lady said about the commercialization in NGOs. Well, NGOs, the purpose of Setting up of NGOs is basically, as Dr. Pradeep said, they are visionaries who think, who look forward, who are able to think of the problem much ahead of people. They want to do something, they are committed. Such people get together and form voluntary organizations to solve certain problems, certain issues. They are the kind of people who are interested in bringing about a change in the community to ameliorate the uh, people's life. They want to bring in quality in people's life. So that is why they are interested in investing their resources, the time, the energy, even forgetting the families. Uh, they, it becomes a mission for them. But that is how the NGO started. But when the government started and government and international agencies started recognizing this, that some individuals who are doing much better work than the government organization can do, they supported. They gave a lot of money. But uh, to fund for these, uh, for their commitment. So initially it may have started like that, but once money started coming, then uh, the fake leaders came up. They wanted to appropriate as much money as possible in the name of doing certain service for the community. Now service, the community knows what kind of service the organization um, uh, provides. You would have big buildings, cars, banners, all kinds of placards, everything, minus the services. But these are the organizations who are able to tap the maximum resources from the government agencies and international agencies. And they, the kind of style of life they lead, even corporate sector people do not lead that kind of style of life. And ultimately, end of the day, what work do they do? That is, uh, I mean, 
one can always go down and take an account of it. So I am, when I talk about volunteer organizations, I do not want to speak about those organizations which are basically merely shops. When we talk about voluntary organizations, we talk about organizations which are in the process of becoming institutions. Well, before I go ahead with that, I would answer the question of role conflict. Well, in an organization, there could be many roles. Yeah, question? Question, please. Well, well, face the role conflict. Then the, the, the role conflict. When you say about the role conflict, uh, what kind of role conflict you mean? You see, when I, as an individual, I have a role. I am a family man, for instance. I have a commitment to my family. I have my commitment to the organization which I am working for. I have a commitment to the uh, the group I am a member of, the club I am a member of. So I play different roles. I have a commitment as a friend to a group of friends. They would like to have me for a party for a, to be in the club. Now, yes, question please. Uh, good morning. I am uh, Dr. Pandey calling from Regional Center Delhi 2. Yeah. The program is indeed very informative. And uh, we have uh, one small query about the different modes of the conflict resolution. Yes. Uh, what, which would be the most appropriate one, uh, particularly in today's scenario, given the kind of the uh, interactivity which we have uh, with different types of individuals, different institutions? Yes. And particularly the one which leads to the amicable uh, settlement of the uh, conflict and uh, resulting into the best possible effort on the part of the organization to achieve its given objectives. Thank you and over. Well, conflict resolution, I mean, let me finish with this role uh, uh, conflict. When you have this kind of role conflict, uh, you got to divide, you know, you got to be very clear as far as what you are supposed to do for whom. And Obviously, you can't do the same thing for both the, uh, for everyone at the same time. You got to divide your time for uh, different set of groups or the, the different uh, set of people. So, when you have given your time to a certain uh, group or a person, you have to concentrate on that. When you do that, much of your conflict gets solved on its own. We'll come down uh -huh. to this question and other questions in the next yeah. session because we are coming to a close. Uh, uh, thank you very much for the questions which are coming and and hopefully, uh, hopefully we take. would uh, because okay. uh, we were not used to having so many questions. Uh, because uh, earlier sessions we had, we were only in the lecturing mode, so we would, uh, very happy. Uh, we are happy and we would uh, uh, both try to do our uh, whatever information that we have with us regarding vol administration and voluntary organizations, we would like to pass it on to that to make you more uh, aware of what uh, if you aren't aware of, you uh, to know what uh, an administration, volunteer organization administration is. At the same time, we would like to answer each and every question and solve it in a, it's just not one word answer, rather make you think and get the answers on your own 
so that would be more interesting for you thank you very much